Hello, I'm Scott Brady with Overland Journal and Expedition Portal, and I am out here with my good friend, Paul May, who is literally one of the OG overlanders here in North America. We've been traveling, bouncing around all parts of the world for decades now together. And we're gonna talk about Paul's 200 series Land Cruiser today. Now this is not your first Land Cruiser. What was actually your first Land Cruiser? First Land Cruiser was uh, an FJ40. Uh, I've had that one for a little over 20 years now. And uh, man, it's changed my life. <laughs> totally, and you own a 60 now and you've had a 100 series. In fact, that was, you put squillions of miles on that thing. Yeah, and quarter then, million. Yeah, a quarter million, right? It's still going. The gentleman that has that is still running it. He's at four and a half, almost five. Oh, that's incredible. And now you've got kind of this pinnacle overlander with the 200 series. What was your motivation to go with the 200 other than it just being a newer vehicle? Well, I started with that 100 series as far as the, this uh, model of travel with the overlanding style of travel. And, and that was a good vehicle, an uh, awesome vehicle. And I had it for a decade and a couple of my friends uh, decided that I should try something new. And uh, so I moved into a four, uh, forerunner, fifth gen. That's right, I do remember that. And had a 23, uh, 2013 trail edition, another awesome vehicle. It, had, it did everything perfectly, but I missed my Land Cruiser. Yeah. And can't go back, went forward and uh, went into the, uh, the 200 here and, and never looked back. This is, this is what I, I don't know what else I'd get. Well, and you're a, you're a taller guy. You're 6'3", you're 6'4"? Six, six, yeah, 6'4 six, on a good day. Yeah. yeah, okay. So it makes sense the 200 is so much more spacious. Well, let's, let's kind of go through the modifications that you've done to the vehicle. And let's, uh, let's just kind of start with the front end here. Uh, talk to me about why you picked what you went with and what were some of the accessories that you installed on the front? Uh, well, of course, it's uh, the uh, ARB uh, front bumper. Uh, phenomenal bumper company. They, they do it right. They know what they're doing. And it works well with all of the airbag compliance and doing all that. So we kept it safe. Uh, VR 10,000 uh, winch, plenty for the size of this vehicle. Does really well, synthetic on there. And then uh, I started putting on some what I call giggle lights. Uh, the, the intensities are impressive. You just turn them on and it makes you chuckle every time. Yeah, sure. Yeah, they're amazing. And of course we threw in some other uh, flood and, and side lights. Yeah, it looks like you've got rigid cornering lights and then these are, are these like a fog here? Yeah, yeah, fog. Um, so it turns out, yeah, it lights up the world and I didn't have to do anything up on the roof, which I tried, I tried roof lights and if you like really staring at your hood a lot, they work out well unless you, you know, blind them and roof lights are just not my thing. So this is plenty for whatever we do. New lighting technology has gotten so much better that you just don't generally need to have a whole array of lights on the, on the rack anymore. Right. Yeah. You just really don't. It works out well for what I do. Uh, usually it's high speed uh, stuff sure. in this vehicle. So uh, there's plenty of light for what we're doing there. Because you use this as a chase truck for the Baja race team, right? <laughs> um, we, we can and I have. Yeah, we've got another truck that we use more for that, that chase thing. But the, uh, the guys that uh, are part of that team, it's the uh, Kangaroo Racing guys. The reason they or how they end up, evolved into a racing team was we were taking our, our Land Cruisers out and bombing down stuff that you just really shouldn't go that fast in. Sure. And we still do, uh, just for fun. Uh, and that's what I kind of set this up at, is, is, a, is a high pace truck. Yeah, very cool. And then under the hood, is the engine all stock? Fully stock, not a change there. Um, I've learned over time to try to keep things uh, as stock as I can on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, Toyota spent a whale of a lot of money developing product that was going to yeah. last, so why change that unless you have to? So yeah. it's, it's pretty much a, a stock drivetrain through the whole thing. And I saw that you have uh, an ARB twin compressor, and then it looks like you also have a dual battery system. What dual battery system did you install? Uh, it's the National Luna uh, Intelligent Solenoid System. Uh, works out well, very basic but it does the job. Yeah. Uh, day in and day out, it just handles the thing. So we, we set up a, uh, a Group 31 AGM in there as the uh, auxiliary battery. One thing that we did was kind of interesting on this vehicle, there's more room where the uh, stock battery location is yeah. versus the other side on the passenger side. So okay. what I did is I did a, a battery relocation and we moved the main battery, smaller battery for starting, over to the passenger side and located the auxiliary battery in this side, which we could go up to a Group 31 on that. Oh, cool. So just a, a swap for auxiliary battery power. 
Yeah, very cool. Anything else under the hood? Uh, you know, in past times, I've used all sorts of uh, different uh, electrical management systems. Uh, did some creative stuff myself. I'm down to a six circuit blue C fuse block, yeah. and that is it. It's simple, it's That's easy, I know where it is and what's gonna go on. I tried all the bells and whistles and they're just not something I ended up using a whole lot. So I, I kept it light and easy and clean. And then let's talk about uh, front suspension. So what did you do up front? Uh, old Man Emu. Honestly, I'm running nitro chargers and OME uh, heavy. Uh, so it's stock plus 800 uh, on the full kit. And I, I really like the OME stuff. Of course, it's been tested, you know, in Australia, brutal testing over there. And it, the it's fact that it survives never. your driving. Is <laughs> exactly. Uh, and for, for what I do, it, it's, it's uncomplicated and I don't have to worry about uh, fixing it or rebuilding shocks or doing anything of that nature. And I, I have yet to have any issue with the suspension. Am I gonna reduce a little bit on the peak performance of this? Yeah, but it's not, it's not a race truck per se. It's a truck that I just don't want to fail. Yeah, Period. you want to travel in it. Yeah, yeah and I don't want to worry about it. And cool. that's why we went with the OME. Well, let's talk a little bit about some of the things here on the side of the Land Cruiser. So you, you went with the Overlander's Wave, the uh, the snorkel, <laughs> periscope, the periscope. Yeah. Um, to me, that the this is one of the the key components to me, uh, on, especially on the Land Cruisers. The air box is is fed through the fender. Terrible on engines, throwing that much dust and goo right in through your engine system. So. By getting this up, we're getting cold, clean air, and I'm, I actually see a little bit of performance improvement getting that air in there better. Yeah, that makes sense. And then you've got some communications going as well. What are you running for comms right now? Um, we've got a uh, ICOM uh, radio inside, uh, two meter on that side. This is a WeBoost system that we've got inside to create a, an elevated uh, signal for us in the remote areas. Nice. And then for your tire and wheel combo, what would you decide on for that? The wheels are a, a fuel, Anza wheel, and uh, the uh, tires are the BF Goodrich TAKO2s. And what's the size Solid. on the tire? Uh, it's about a 33. Okay, uh, that is a lot of expensive sheet metal running along the side, so you've got, <laughs> you've yeah. got some good rock sliders as well. Who did you go with on the rock sliders? Uh, uh, a friend of mine, his name's Christo Slee. He runs Slee Offro out of, out of uh, Golden. And uh, I've known him a long time, and he just makes awesome products. Uh, the sliders are a 3 16th steel thing. I can I can pivot this thing on a rock and it wouldn't care at all. And it's a nice clean step. It looks pretty close to factory on there. And we also ran a full uh, set of uh, ARB skids through the bottom. So let's talk about the back of the Land Cruiser. You got a lot going on here. So what are some of the accessories that you installed here? Well, first of all, the footprint on it is, the, is again, the Slee off-road bumper. I've had a few different bumpers in, in my time and all of them have been pretty good bumpers. But this one's far away the best bumper I've ever had as far as the design and the use of it. Um, he was able to recess the bumper and, and get clearances in there so it helps the uh, departure angle significantly uh, on that. And then from there we build out all sorts of stuff. Spare tire, max tracks, high lift are all over on that side. And then we've got on this side what was supposed to be a ladder. We put on some propane and a, and a storage box on the back end here too. And, and as I understand it, this is your not your first aid kit, this is your thirst aid. Thirst aid kit. So let's check this thing out. <laughs> it's a makes another thing that makes me chuckle is uh, we decided uh, what's a campground without a bar. So we. Uh, That's so cool. <laughs> that is amazing. Oh, you even have Hendrix. So. Oh yeah. Another oh, reason why I love you, Paul. So. Thought of you when I was putting that in there. <laughs> to make sure I had uh, my buddies taken care of. Yeah, and and you just designed this whole, architected this whole thing yourself. Oh yeah, over a couple beers in my driveway. <laughs> uh, I thought it'd be kind of fun. Uh, we had worked with a company called Trek Pack for a long time, and I had a lot of their uh, materials uh, uh, on hand. So yeah, one day I just decided, man, that'd be a lot of fun to throw something together. It shows the utility of uh, Value Box, which we were involved with. And yeah. So a lot of fun. Yeah, and those value boxes are nice. You can tell how well it seals. There's there's essentially no dust on the inside. Yeah, so. five years after, right? Yeah, that's amazing. Very cool. And then <clears throat> there's a sticker on the back of your truck, and you said it's the only sticker on your vehicle <laughs> other than your own company. Other than the, than the logos. Yeah, it's a little uh, white uh, cutout of the Millennium Falcon. And, um, and what it is, we figured that this is a, a very large white cargo a uh, cargo vehicle that uh, has some black highlights on it, goes like a bat out of hell. Well, 
It's perfect. Perfect, right? Yeah, that's, that's right. Uh, right up the line. So that's our uh, our little Millennium Falcon. Oh, that's very cool. You can go light speed. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I love yeah. it. Well, the back looks really clean and well organized, which all of your trucks have always been. But talk a little bit about this goose gear system that you got back here. One of the things I wanted to make sure on this vehicle is that anything that was in here was secure and properly stowed. And also wanted to worry about uh, weight distribution and keeping it uh, and light and set up. And um, Goose Gear is phenomenal products. Brian Fulton's an awesome man. And I, I had him do some custom stuff back when he had a couple minutes to do so. I took the truck down and gave it to him for five, six weeks. And he designed a full system um, both for the rear as well as the, the center of it. So we're down to a two-seater in this truck. And what I figured out, within a few pounds, putting this whole kit in was relatively close to the same weight of taking the seats out. So we really didn't change the, uh, the uh, gross vehicle weight concerns there with the interior system. Sure. And so that was uh, really nice about it. I also had him do some things for our dogs so that we didn't uh, break any legs uh, sure. uh, running down the road. And it makes a, a well of a nice sleeping platform. In it. So if it's just you camping, you can just sleep right inside. Right, right inside. And and if we're, we're doing something, uh, when I am just solo, uh, we take the tent off and leave it uh, pretty light up top. Keeps the, uh, keeps us uh, gravity down too. So yeah, sure. Uh, that works out well. But yeah, lots of lots of little toys and things that we really like in here. It works out quite. So this looks, nice. this looks like uh, the adventure trailers kind of slide out Yes, it is, the AT combo slide. So we've got uh, uh, National Luna up on top, a 50 liter there, uh, dual zone. And then underneath is the stove. And with the propane bottle hooked up on the tank, it's a simple... Uh, simple and this is uh, Partner Steel, right? Correct, yeah, Partner Steel. They have them custom made for AT with the, with the uh, controls on the end because of the slides. Sure. You have to have it on the end. Yeah, that's always been such an, a clever product in my mind. And then this National Luna is the dual zone, right? Correct, yeah, it has a, a 40 liter fridge and a 10 liter freezer, but National Luna changed things up and now they're independent controls. So it can be fridge, 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 freezer, 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 yeah. whatever you want in those in both of those zones instead of dedicated uh, spaces, so. Yeah, it's that, having a freezer, having like ice cream at, or making ice at the end of the day for your cocktail bar, right? Oh yeah, well, I call my wife my little whiskey girl and if there isn't cocktail ice, we ain't going. So that's just <laughs> that's the way great. it is, yeah. That's great, and then this this drawer here is really sp really spacious. Yeah, again, that's our, that's our full kitchen. Anything yeah. that we need to prepare, anything that we do on the road is right there and uh, ready to rock. And again, we did some divider systems in there. It keeps it nice and quiet. Yeah, the Trek Pack does such a nice job of, of not causing damage to the equipment from corrugations, but also just keeping the rattling to a minimum. Right. Keeps all your gear in, in top shape. And then how much gallon? How many gallons of water do you have? Uh, four gallons of water in there. I figure there's plenty of liquids in my life, whether it's orange juice or coffee or soda or water or whatever. So uh, four gallons for a good long weekend is plenty for what we do. Yeah, perfect. Oh, this looks great back here. So let's talk real quick about the interior of the vehicle. So we've got in your typical second row is where your puppy hangs out. Yeah. And it looks like you've designed the, the system to be where the dog bed is now level with the sleeping surface. So. That's correct. When we took this down for, uh, for Goose Gear to work on, I requested a couple different things. Most of their sleeping platforms are, are literally that, a, a platform. I asked them to enclose the platform area for storage inside uh, with some clamshell tops uh, on it. And on the other side, we recessed it four inches so that we have a memory foam bed for our, our lab Stella to, to go with this. That's all, you gotta have your puppy along. Yeah. yeah. And then up front, yeah. you've got some Shillman seats, which these are, those are amazing. Awesome seats. Uh, game changer for me as far as uh, my ability to, to do long, uh, long days. Um, the other seats, uh, the Land Cruiser seats are awesome seats. They do everything perfectly, unless you're over six. Uh, six foot, and then uh, it gets a little bit uncomfortable in the long days. We're the first ones that have put a oh, set cool. of Shieldmons in a 200, as far as I know. And it looks great in the car, too. It looks totally at home. Yeah, yeah, it works out wonderfully for what I do. And then anything else that you've done up front in the cabin? Um, not a whole lot, other other than the, the two meter. We've got all of our navigation stuff that uh, we don't have set up right now, but uh, uh, other than that, that's pretty well it. 
Yeah, that's great. Nice place to spend time. Yeah, yeah. Well, we're almost wrapped up here with the walk around and you mentioned that you had installed an auxiliary fuel tank. What's the story on that one? Um, the, the trucks come with about 25 gallons in them, uh, which is a, a fair amount for, for this truck. Uh, we moved the tire out of there, uh, out of underneath the vehicle so that we didn't have to worry about getting a tire out with a truck in a hole. Great. Well, there's uh, some good space back there to utilize. And so I, I went with a long range or 25 gallon auxiliary. So I doubled our fuel range. Now I've got a range somewhere in mid 600 mile range wow. on this now. So that really does help out on it. What are you finding that you get for fuel economy? Um, it's all uh, depending on speed. Yeah. Um, I'm getting about 13 miles to the gallon, full kit uh, at 80. So. Well, and that, and that seems about what you get in an 80 series, maybe even a little less. And this has a lot more power and a lot more comfort. And yeah. Yeah, I, I figure that's what I would be getting. And uh, the 100 series I had, we were right in that 10, 11 range. Of yeah. kit. It was a heavier truck than what we went on in yeah. this build, but uh, yeah. And then up top, you've got your your awning and your tent. Yep. Uh, up here, we've got a, a set up on some uh, uh, K9, easy on K9 load bars. We've got their uh, Stealth rooftop tent. And uh, this is the Series 1000 awning. I'm a little spoiled in this aspect because I can decide and put whatever we need at certain times for for shows and stuff and that, this kit works out really well. But I really like this awning because it, it doesn't have, I mean the bag awnings have a lot of advantages. They can be very inexpensive and very lightweight but this is probably a similar weight but it's not going to have the damage from the sun. You don't have to worry about zippers getting stuck and I, I kind of li like the fact that it's really understated too. It, it is a really nice awning. Uh, it's in essence a bag awning in a hard shell case. Uh, Easy On's been doing these awnings for going on 30 years. They've got it down. Yeah, that's amazing. And then I've used the Stealth and it's, it's literally one of the most comfortable roof tents I've ever been in because the mattress is, is like being at home. Yeah. Um, and then I also just really like the overall structure and the ease of setup. Now this one, is it still where you just a couple clips and it gas struts and it comes up? That's correct, yeah. There's two at the front, two at the back. Um, a lot of the tents that are on the market now are just a kind of a hinged thing. And we, we've got a model that's like that, but it, it's for our, our height disadvantaged folks like myself and you, boy, that really works uh, to a, a disadvantage as yeah. far as the length and, and sleep. So this one's really nice. It, it raises its, uh, the front end goes up 18 inches, which makes it useful throughout the whole footprint of the tent. Yeah, yeah. yeah these are really comfortable tents. Well, this truck is awesome, Paul. It's been so fun to watch your evolution of Land Cruisers in the decades that I've known you. And this one is certainly the most Paul perfect of all the Land Cruisers, so. Yeah, I really like it. I, if I were to get rid of this truck, I would probably get another one and yeah. do the same stuff. Can't well, it'll think be of interesting to see what comes with the 300 series, so. Yeah, yeah, I'm waiting. I'm yeah, waiting. that's awesome. Well, thanks so much for showing us around, Paul. Thank you, Scott, it's been yeah, a pleasure. Absolutely.